When a hurricane approaches, your family needs a plan to evacuate. Patience is key when on the roads as traffic can get heavy with so many leaving at once. In tonight's Q&A, one viewer asks, what is the rule for instituting contraflow to ease evacuation problems? For that answer, we speak to John Guidros with the Department of Transportation and Development. So contraflow was actually discontinued uh, in Southwest Louisiana. Um, the reason for discontinuing contraflow in the region is that it's actually detrimental uh, to evacuation efforts. Once contraflow is put into place, that effectively ends efforts to get residents evacuated through buses. Um, also, in addition to that, contraflow requires a lot more manpower, it requires a lot more personnel to get it safely set up. Um, they have to pick up barricades, there's other materials that have to be put in place for contraflow to work effectively. So, you know, in essence, if a hurricane is approaching our southwest Louisiana, DOTD encourages our residents to uh, go early or leave early and head north. When it's time to evacuate, so many questions arise, especially for those who don't have a game plan. Where should you go? How will you get there? What should you bring? KPLC's Teresa Schmidt has some tips. Hurricane evacuation plans come in all shapes and sizes. Mark Cronister and his wife Marion have evacuated at least four times. This was their home before Hurricane Laura destroyed it. Biggest thing that bothers me is really looking at the photographs of everything that we had to do to identify contents, which was over 3,000 photographs that went all the way from here to the Gulf Highway. He's learned it's best to evacuate when recommended and be safe, as they did in Laura. I don't think we would have gotten killed, but we would have we, gotten hurt because when everything blew up and out, all the sheetrock and everything came down in all the rooms, and so we would have gotten hurt at a minimum. Evacuation is also important due to his wife's health issues. Make sure you got all your uh, medical stuff, you know, whether it be medicine, whether it be batteries for a medical device, but literally everything that you need medically for a week. Five days of clothes, bottled water, plenty of bottled water, 20 extra gallons of gas if it can be stored safely in your vehicle, if you got a truck, for example. He brings documentation of important papers, and they head to a hotel. Plus, at 70 years of age, he figures it's best to get out of the way. And if you're up in age, why not be out of the way of, of everybody that's trying to actually do something unless you can contribute to the cause? Yet not everyone can afford a hotel. In Sulphur, Chris Higginbotham and his family ride it out if they can. If it's a weaker, smaller storm, you know, like a category one or a two, uh, we're probably going to shelter in place. But if evacuation is needed to keep his family safe, they go. If it's looking like a direct hit with, you know, 110, 120 miles an hour winds hitting us dead on, uh, maybe the storm surge coming straight up the Calcasieu, we're probably going to start looking at leaving. They pack up supplies, medicine, their dogs too, and head to relatives up north. And Chris brings ham radio and other equipment as a backup for communicating. Papa bear to mama bear. Do you copy? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we can literally throw a wire in a tree, hook up to a car battery, and still communicate with people down here who have similar equipment and similar capabilities, even if there is complete failure of the uh, you know, phone systems, cellular networks, internet, and we saw some of that with Hurricane Laura. Those with no ride or place to stay do have the option of getting picked up at various locations in Calcasieu and then sent on to shelters in North Louisiana. And they are allowed to bring their pets. Teresa Schmidt, 7 News. You can find other evacuation resources and all of our stories of staying strong on kplctv.com. Just click the Hurricane tab.